today's topic is about fever with hepatosplenomegaly uh, so uh, firstly we will be seeing about the differential diagnosis and how do we move on to the cases okay so we will not deal with the case directly it will be a small precise topic that differential diagnosis will be there and with the differential diagnosis how are you going to pick up the diagnosis okay with the symptoms how are you going to pick up the diagnosis so first we'll see what are the differential diagnosis so fever with hepatosplenomegaly always think about the first three causes that is infection inflammation and then malignancies okay and there comes the rare diseases like dress syndrome or uh, serum sickness okay so first in the infection we we can uh, give it as a like bacterial viral and then parasites so for the bacteria enteric fever scrub typhus leptospirosis brucellosis disseminated tuberculosis and then infective enteritis can be the causes okay next for the viral it is the viral hepatitis a b e and dengue hiv infection with associated opportunistic infection and the infectious mononucleosis when it comes to the parasite it is mostly the malaria and if it is in northern states of uh, india it will be the kala azar okay so we don't have the kala azar in the southern state okay inflammatory for the inflammatory we have the systemic lupus erythematosus and then soji of systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis next hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis periodic fever syndrome so forget about the other things you can remember only the sle and then socio okay next mel for the malignancy it is mostly leukemia lymphoma and then neuroblastosis uh, neuroblastoma okay so rare things are like dress syndrome and then serum sickness now with the history what are the clues that you can identify so first let's start with the demography so for the age when the child is presenting in the infancy period it is mostly the intrauterine uh, acquired infection like uh, torch hiv or the congenital tuberculosis and then neuroblastoma it is notorious that it can occur in the infancy period itself so it can present from the infancy period itself but leukemia is rare below 1 year so you cannot keep your dd as uh, leukemia for a 1 year old child with fever with hepatosplenomegaly dengue viral hepatitis and then typhoid again after 1 year okay in the adolescence period uh, rather than giving all these as your first dd you can start with sle okay always remember to keep the infectious disease as your first disease first dd because infectious disease can happen at any age after first year so infectious disease will be your top priority and then comes the connective tissue disorder so according to the age you can just give your uh, dd as such so when when it comes to the location so if the child is on coastal areas where the mosquito and then rats uh, these are all very predominant so we have the sewage problem will also be there so we have this dengue and then leptospirosis are more common in the coastal area when it comes to the northern and the northeastern area we have this malaria and then kala azar even kala azar is very particular to the northern and northeastern area whereas malaria is much in the north okay and we have both in the northern and southern also now coming to the fever so always um, you'll be uh, discussing the um, any complaint as a onset duration and then progression so that you say it as a opd that is onset progression and then duration okay so when the duration is less than one week always think about the infectious disease like viral fever dengue and then malaria when it is more than one week it will be like typhoid scrub typhus and then leptospirosis which are notorious to have a longer period okay? so even longer duration that is more than two weeks or more than three weeks going to months like then you can suspect about the chronic disease chronic uh, issues like tuberculosis leukemia histiocytosis or any connective tissue disorder depending upon the age that you are going to deal okay grade of fever okay so now we have this low grade as well as the high grade so for the low grade fever it's usually the tuberculosis especially 
any other chronic uh, infection can also have a low grade fever okay now coming to the high grade high grade will be having this malaria dengue and leptospirosis which doesn't even settle with us as uh, type of fever so we have this chepladen pattern in the case of typhoid and tertian or quaternion uh, type uh, type in the case of malaria and we have this different type of uh, fever that is pearl epstein type of periodic fever as in the case of lymphoma other histories that include on um, loss of appetite and the weight so weight to significant weight loss then you should think about the tuberculosis and the malignancy that is for at least 3 months you have to uh, the child must be reduced with the weight at least 5 kg or for 6 uh, months or more the child having to got increase in the weight okay so jaundice which is like viral hepatitis leptospirosis and then malaria if the child is having edema then there is some kind of uh, extra vascular fluid leak so it could be a dengue or it could be a strep in the case of severe anemia also we may have this severe feature like edema okay rashes rashes is uh, very particular in the case of dengue strep typhus leukemia sle and sometimes transient rashes can occur in sojio so dengue and uh, dengue will be having this uh, macular papillary rashes scrub we have this eshka so you can ask for eshka or you can search for it and then leukemia again we have this petit rashes okay sle we have this pat uh, pattern of malar rashes so this is the clinical clues that is a child presenting with vomiting headache macular papillary rashes with or without headache with or without edema think about dengue a child presenting with vomiting and jaundice <clears throat> along with fever with heptosplenia megaly then think about viral hepatitis and then malaria malaria even in the later stage they can have a jaundice okay so a child with fever with heptosplenia megaly with eska with or without edema always think about the scrub a child with fever with hepatosplenia megaly with renal involvement then think about the leptospirosis here you get the jaundice also in the leptospirosis okay a child with fever with heptosplenia megaly with joint pain and transient rashes then think about the sojio so we there in the sojio we have this joint pain and then transient rashes a child with fever with heptosplenia megaly with joint pain or bony tenderness along with petechial rashes then think about the leukemia a child presenting with a fever with hepatosplenia megaly with headache and then seizures then think about the cerebral malaria or scrub encephalitis meaning encephalitis a child with a uh, fever with uh, hepatosplenia megaly who is a known valvular heart disease or congenital heart disease then rule out the infective endocarditis for sure so now coming on to the examination so if the child is sick looking or well looking so if the child is sick looking then rule out typhoid malignancy first well if the child is well looking and comfortable that could be some viral infection or malaria in the afeptal state okay now we are coming to the fecal part that is paler interest clumping all those things so if the child is having a paler then try to rule out malaria leukemia tuberculosis infective endocarditis and then connective tissue disorder if the child is having a ictus then rule out this viral hepatitis leptospirosis uh, neonatal hepatitis and then kala azar so depending upon the history and the examination that you are getting your top priority of dd will be all these things so in the, in case the child is having a lymphadenopathy so go ahead with the tuberculosis screening hiv and infectious mononucleosis or leukemia if the child is having a rash look for a rashes of that particular type of rashes whether it's macular papillary or petechial rashes or some particular type of rashes like malar rash etc and look for the infective endocarditis sign so like uh, janeal lesion like janeal lesion like janeal lesions 
oscillus roots, all these things. Okay. Now, look for the clubbing. So, if the child is having a clubbing, then it can be an infective endocarditis, tuberculosis, or the chronic liver disease too. Okay. So, if the child is having a bluish subcutaneous nodule or periorbital ecchymosis along with the orbital proptosis of opsoclonus or myoclonus, ataxic syndrome, hypertension, and then secretory diarrhea, it's nothing more than the neuroblastoma. So, if all these are there in a child, especially in infancy period itself, then you go forward with the neuroblastoma. So, you have to do a eye examination fundus for the papilledema because you have to rule out the child is not having a tuberculosis. So, tuberculosis meningitis can be there or in case of chorea, uh, torch infection, we have this chorioretinitis. Okay. So, this is the simplest approach. So, any child coming with a fever with heptosplenomegaly, if the duration is more than one week, then you have the two differential diagnoses that is heptobiliary system or uh, it is involving a systemic infection or the inflammation. So, if it is a hepatobiliary system, directly go on to the viral hepatitis. Okay. So, what will be the feature of viral hepatitis? How are we going to differentiate? Because everything is going to have a vomiting, nausea, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, fever. Okay. So, with certain subtle things, we can differentiate. That is, vomiting will be there even after the fever is subsiding. That is, vomiting will be the late feature or it will be starting and permanent, uh, or persistently staying uh, for the hepatobiliary, for example, in the case of viral hepatitis. In this child, we have a hepatomegaly, like liver span will be more than that of the splenomegaly. Okay. So, hepatomegaly more than a splenomegaly, let's think about a viral hepatitis. Okay. When it is also associated with the heat stress, with the duration, fever heat duration more than one week. Okay. Now, coming to a systemic infection or the inflammation that involving the reticular epithelial system, that is like malaria, uh, EBV, and then scrub. So, in this case, what happens is the first few days you have the vomiting along with the onset of fever and then it subsides, then the fever will be continuing. Okay. So, in this uh, prodromal symptom only you have this vomiting. So, in this case, what you have is the splenomegaly will be more than that of the heptomegaly. So, when it comes to the case of malaria, uh, scrub, so spleen will be more enlarged than that of the heptomegaly. Along with that, there will be no, fever, no jaundice and no lymphadenopathy. So, this is an approach for the fever with heptosplenomegaly when it is duration is more than one week. Okay. So, come, finally, we are ending up with the how are we uh, like while palpating the liver, you have to tell all these points that is whether it's soft, rounded, uh, it's um, how about its margin, uh, whether uh, consistency of the liver. And then surface of the liver and then liver spine. Okay. So with these things, we why are we saying all these things? Because we have some clues with all these things. Okay. So what are the clues that we can see? Okay. So for the liver, if it is gender, then think about congestive cardiac failure, viral hepatitis, or any infection of the liver actually. Okay. So any infection of the liver means that is it could be a viral hepatitis or any abscess in the liver, liver abscess. And then infectious mononucleus is going to cause a tender liver and tender spleen also. Okay? Now, soft, soft liver, where you can see, it's mostly the acute conditions. Okay? So, it can be a CCF or push down liver, where the liver as such is soft. And then acute infections like dengue, malaria, virus, hepatitis, and then scrub. Okay. So, when it comes to a firm liver, so it has already five rows. Okay. So, these are the chronic conditions like cirrhosis, chronic hepatitis, chronic malaria, tuberculosis, and then metabolic disorders. When it comes to hard liver, where you have a tumor, so CML or hepatic tumor or any secondaries in the liver is going to produce a hard liver. Margins, margins, it can be a firm, soft, rounded margin. Okay. Firm to hard, we have this sharp liver border uh, and the soft rounded margins are like usually in the acute one. Okay? So when it comes to the surface, surface, what happens is that 
whether the surface of the liver when we palpate if it is normal or nodular you will be telling so if it is a nodula then you think about the cirrhosis and then malignancy similarly we have for the spleen if the spleen is tender we have the acute conditions like ccf or any trauma to the spleen or any splenic abscess okay if the spleen is soft then you have the same uh, acute condition as that of the liver so it can be a ccf or it can be infection like malaria dengue all those things, okay so firm liver uh, firm spleen can be seen in the case of uh, malignancies or local hypertension okay. so we are ending up the session thank you